This edition of iItaly New York is brought to you by... So what are we going to do at Expo? We'll get to know more than 140 countries and Italian excellence all in one place. We'll discover the world's biggest restaurant. We'll go to the shopping supermarket of the future. At Expo, we'll ask a lot of questions and get the answers from the world's finest minds. We'll take part in shows in a theater under the stars. And we'll discover that food is joy because food is life. Expo Milano 2015, the grand worldwide food event is coming. So have you got your ticket? On this week's episode, people, images from Naples, waiting the arrival of Mayor Luigi De Magistris, Dolce Vita, Zabetto, a new location for espresso on Fifth Avenue. Events, Pulse Art, a contemporary art fair. City, backstage with the board of Casa Italiana Zorilla Marimo. And now let's start with Naples.
Let's eat Italian with iItaly TV. My name is Emiliano and I worked in a restaurant uh, with my uncle in Italy, uh, which is located in Riccione called uh, Panevino. And that's when I really uh, got into restaurant business and I liked uh, uh, making espresso and that's when I became a bar barista. We opened in uh, October. Uh, we were very successful. We were uh, in a, a magazine as the cheapest uh, espresso bar in New York. We, we kind of have the same clients as we have uh, uh, in the first location, which we opened in 2006. The uh, American clients are uh, kind of getting too used to it, uh, drinking espresso, which, you know, for them it's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, you give them an espresso and they think that, well, like, there's nothing in a cup. Uh, so we kind of try to educate them, and that's, uh, that's, that's also been very successful. We have a lot of people that uh, come back every day, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of regulars. The machine is one of the best machines. Uh, it's like having a Ferrari when it comes to an uh, espresso machine. A Chimbali, uh, one of the best uh, machines in the world, I would say. And we are one of, one of the first espresso bars to have uh, the M100. Uh, which basically uh, it gives a lot of control to the barista. Uh, you could put your own profile in the espresso machine, uh, which you could control the pressure, temperature, in order to get the perfect espresso. Being a barista in Italy, it's, it's basically um, the person that makes a cappuccino for uh, people that are starting their day. Uh, started to go to work. So being a barista in Italy, it's almost like uh, also being kind of uh, an actor, kind of like making somebody else's day uh, uh, better. But also, uh, I was surprised moving to the United States, uh, uh, the customers are very, very friendly. Uh, I was expecting different, uh, but they are actually really nice. Uh, people really like when uh, we make their cappuccino and uh, we ask them, how was your morning? Um, and that's a great experience. Uh, we love to make people happy and uh, I try my best and that's my job. Making espresso is not as easy as it sounds uh, or as it looks. Uh, make, making an espresso, um, it's actually an art. Fare an espresso è un arte. So the bar is not just about making making espresso. Obviously, that's that's uh, that's we are really known for it. But we also uh, we also have other products. Uh, we have uh, uh, fresh pastries that comes from Italy. Uh, we have the cornetti. Uh, we get them from Bindi, which is uh, an Italian importer. Um, their uh, their factory is in, uh, located in Milano, which they import everything uh, to the United States, and we buy from them, including the baci di dama, ocri frolle. Um, and the tiramisu. We also have the sfogliatelle, so we get them from the same uh, same company. Um, we also make the fresh panini, which they are really tasty. So all the sandwiches uh, are made freshly every morning. Um, and we also here, as you could see in the store, we have uh, the banco imported from Italy, uh, all Malbor, uh, everything that you see in the store, it's imported from Italy, including me. The owners started this uh, espresso bar because they believe in Italian quality. Uh, they really like uh, to make something real, uh, which is really hard to find in New York. They want, they want to offer the best quality 
and uh, they want they want for everybody that comes in our store to have the feeling as you as you basically will, will go in any coffee shop in Rome, Milano, or anywhere in Italy. Coming up next, our exclusive event. Claudio Composti, the director of MC2 Gallery, based in Milano. The gallery uh, is in Milano since uh, 2009, when I opened with my business partner Vincenzo Maccarone. And uh, I grew up in this field of art uh, because my father had a gallery in the 70s and 80s with a business partner. So it becomes like a passion and a blood for me. And the gallery is focused, uh, for the most part, uh, about photography. But not only, as you can see, we show here even the installation by a Vietnamese artist, Trong Giang Nguyen. And uh, New York has been the first uh, place where we show uh, more than photography. Uh, we worked uh, with painters too, sometimes with video artists, because the mission of the gallery uh, is uh, basically to promote art. Days in uh, New York, uh, in the Pulse Art Fair, uh, uh, has been the chance uh, to show for the first time uh, the project of Renato D'Agostino, Italian photographer. We met uh, personally almost 10 years ago. We started as friends and I discovered that he, he is and was a great photographer. My name is uh, Renato D'Agostino. I'm um, Italian, originally from um, a small town outside of Venice and uh, I'm a photographer. I started in, uh, in Venice uh, to get engaged with photography, the first few roles, uh, and then uh, I experimented a little bit uh, traveling uh, throughout Europe. After a short experience in, uh, in Milan, I decided it was time to, to try what New York would give me. I knew about the energy, I knew about the photography situation, the different possibilities. I had a chance uh, to to get to know this photographer. He's one of the legendary photographers uh, in the world of photography and his name is Ralph Gibson. So I became his assistant and uh, mostly printing the darkroom. In the meantime, I was, uh, um, I was working on my projects. I kept uh, uh, working on the idea of books. So each uh, project I was working on started becoming a book and then an exhibition. The photographs uh, up on the wall always uh, change. The scale changes, the uh, color of the walls, uh, the illumination, uh, uh, the curator, the audience you present the project to, always uh, um, has as many possibilities to change uh, each time. The book to me is extremely important because uh, it always respects the initial idea of the project. The sequencing, the size, the distance between the eyes and the pages will always remain that. Fritsche is, uh, is the first uh, body of um, color work that I produced. It became a book uh, in the late 2014. I was um, in Yesolo Lido and uh, every year in, uh, in that seaside uh, um, of Venice, uh, there is this event, the Frecce Tricolori, in English is a tricolor arrows. And uh, it's the aerobatic demonstration uh, of the Aeronautica Militare, the Italian Aeronautica Militare. So I liked the fact, uh, more than the lines that they were drawing in the sky, I liked the idea of uh, this traditional thing related uh, for a long time uh, to the Italian tradition of, uh, uh, of the beach. My graphic designers um, from Venice, uh, who are actually are also publishers, uh, they, their name is Automatic Books, they, they asked me to, uh, to work on this together with me and, uh, and to make a book. So um, it was a little bit challenging at the beginning because uh, I've been working for about 12 years with 100% black and white only. So this was the first time approaching color. So I put together the images and with their help we studied a layout that could be um, a separate element from my usual black and white also in the way that it was proposed to the public. La mia galleria nasce 15 anni fa a Milano. 
ho sempre amato e frequentato l'arte, abbiamo scelto di lavorare con diversi artisti americani di area pittorica legati a correnti chiamate pop surrealismo piuttosto che low bro. In questo caso ci troviamo vicino a delle opere di una piccola mostra che l'artista Zio Ziegler ha voluto uniformare sotto il nome open source Hieroglyphics. Egli è giovanissimo, ha 27 anni e vive a San Francisco. Ha questo nome che sembra un nickname ma è il nome reale che gli è stato dato. Ha origini italiane e in omaggio all'Italia gli è stato dato questo nome, Zio. Il suo mondo è vicino al muralismo messicano ma è anche in tessuto di riferimenti europei per cui si possono vedere Leger, si può vedere Picasso, trasformato quasi in modo eh, psichedelico eh, che io trovo unico nel, un, in questo momento nell'arte eh, contemporanea. This is our Italian city. Let's take a little journey with us. Ogni volta è un gran piacere perché a parte che ogni anno si può e si deve fare di più e in più perché ogni anno c'è l'incoraggiamento intanto del pubblico che è sempre più vasto e più interessato e anche dei board members che si spalleggiano molto, ci incoraggiano e ci danno molto aiuto quindi ogni board è un ossigeno, è un po' più d'ossigeno che abbiamo. It's 20 years that I've shared with this lady. I think uh, we ended up changing each other, as it often happens in couples. And um, I identify myself a lot with what we do at the Casa, and I think the Casa ended up uh, looking a bit like me. I hope not too much. It's a fabulous institution where it brings Italian culture, heritage, uh, education, all the educators give Italian education to young students in America. It's a fabulous contribution that Mariucci has given to this city. I attended New York University. The Italian department was part of the French department. There was no separate Italian department until Mariucci came along and distinguished it. We were orphans. Now we're a family. And now the family has who I consider the first lady of Italian culture in New York is Mariuccia. Her generosity, her philanthropy, the type of initiatives she's done, unselfishly and without any vanity, she is the best role model I can think of. Come dicono in questa bellissima espressione americana, it's my baby. It's my baby ber perché effettivamente è stata un'idea chissà nata così intanto per l'idea di avere qualcosa che, che sempre, che anche quando io non ci sarò più eh, fosse un po' qui per ricordare soprattutto mio marito però è diventata la vera casa italiana, quella che si voleva perché si sono create manifestazioni autonome, gruppi autonomi che vengono qui e che fanno il circolo del libro, che fanno l'opera, che fanno il teatro. Il mio scopo era che fosse una vetrina di quello che l'Italia offre oggi culturalmente di più importante e interessante. Casa Italiana means a great deal about the Italian art and what it represents in America for all Italians, not only here but everywhere. And uh, I've known uh, La Baronessa for so many years and I hope that we can continue to give this wonderful thing to everyone, not only Italians but Americans who want to learn all about our heritage. 
for me it means a lot. It uh, means uh, the real Italian culture brought to New York in the most uh, effective and elegant way. And for the council it means the same and in addition the fact that uh, we have uh, really a, a point of reference for uh, all the Italian especially is the way to reach the students. It means what the President of the Republic told me when I sat right here with him in this uh, gallery maybe two years ago. He says the Casa Italiana is a jewel and uh, one cannot say enough about the Baroness of course who has underwritten the entire project over the years. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the bridge and it's the bridge at a very high level and the appreciation of the patrimony and the uh, traditions and the, the essence of what Italy is, is exhibited here. It is the home of the Italian Studies Department and it is our home of Italian culture in New York. It provides us with an unbelievable platform for amazing events and we really couldn't do without it. Personally, it means a lot because I enjoy Casa as a user. I come here very often and it's a bit like being back home. So being a part of the life at Casa, it means staying in touch with the country that I love and the country where I was born and raised. <laughs> it's been a, a, a busy past, a, a busy present, and I hope it's going to be an adventurous future. Uh, what I always say is that very often I go back home tired. Uh, sometimes I go back home angry because I deal with Italians and how can you be not angry at Italians sometimes but I never once in those 20 years I went back home bored. The Casa Italiana for me is not simply an outpost, a refuge of Italian culture and tradition but it's where Italy lands when Italy comes to New York. Every Italian that I will want to see passing through New York inevitably is on the stage of the Casa Italiana or at a conference or teaching or showing a film or hanging new paintings or introducing a new food. Italy comes to the Casa Italiana because the Casa Italiana receives the most diverse kind of Italian creativity you find anywhere in America. The expression of America is the place and prominence that Italy has in the new world. And we feel that uh, we're so proud of our background, we're so proud of our heritage, that it brings us together to celebrate so that our participation in Italian-American organization is a symbol of our love for Italy. It's important that everything is done with love, as we do every day, and that it is done with offering something that is sometimes a little different. It's the nest of Italian-American, and to me that's what's important, uh, culture and relationships. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, wellspring uh, of information. Uh, in this area, uh, it has, uh, we've established a relationship with uh, a club that I belong to, the Tito Asenio of New York. For me, Casa Italiana is home. Uh, I'm here, I do the, I help them with the exhibition, I'm their, their art advisor. And uh, for the last uh, practically 20 years, I've been uh, organizing two exhibitions of Art Italiana here at the Casa to promote Italian art. The name that the Baroness chose, Casa, it doesn't remain only a name on the plaque in front of it, but the Casa is really what it means in Italian. A home where they can come, be themselves, share ideas, uh, hear stories and tell their stories. In next week's episode, City, Naples Comes to New York. People, El Gato Chimney, a Milan-based self-taught artist. Dolce Vita, 
Pastai, authentic Sicilian handmade pasta recipes in New York. Events, La Aquila, a rebirth with off-site art. This edition of iItaly TV was brought to you by Colavita Extra Virgin Olive Oil. And Chirio Chopped Tomatoes.